Lil Peep, Mac Miller, how many young rappers have to die before we do something about it? What is up everybody? This is Chris from The Rewired Soul where we talk about the problem but focus on the solution. Make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell and in case you are new, in case you didn't know, I have a daily blog that I've been doing and I just talk about different mental health subjects to try to give you something to think about during the day. Take with it what you will. Hopefully you learn some lessons that might help improve your mental health a little bit. But yeah, so anyways, um, I wanted to talk about Lil Pump. How did this come up? How did this video topic come up? Because I'm not a fan of Little Pump. Um, it's not that, uh, you know, his music's bad. Like, I think that, you know, there's somebody for everybody's type of music, right? And Lil Pump's music is just not my music. But obviously the dude blew up, so I know of him. I know who he is. So anyways, a while back, I was actually thinking about doing um, a reaction video to his video, Drug Addicts, because those of you who don't know me, I am a recovering drug addict and alcoholic. And I was thinking about doing a reaction video to it, um, just never ended up doing it. But knowing Lil Pump and his breakout song, Gucci Gang and things like that, like I looked at this and like I mentioned in the intro, like I, I, I've seen so many people pass away from from drugs, from depression, from suicide, and things like that. And Lil Pete, Mac Miller, those are two people who are in the same kind of genre who died from drug addiction. So I wanna talk about this. I wanna talk about being worried and as well as maybe some things that might be able to help. And I don't know Lil Pump, all right? I am not, you know, his therapist. I'm not his friend. I am nothing like that. But I wanna to just toss around some ideas of what people might be able to do as a community. Maybe somebody close to him could do. But also, if you have somebody in your life who might be struggling with the same thing, maybe there's something that you could do about it as well. And I hope to share my experience as a recovering drug addict who almost died six and a half years ago. Maybe some things that might be able to help. So anyways, the other day I was thinking about, I'm like, whatever happened to Lil Pump, right? And I looked up, I looked up like Lil Pump and I saw some recent videos about him and I'm just like, oh, okay, cool. And I checked him. And a video, a video came up by um, Domus Live News. I don't know if I'm saying it right, but the title of the video had me, you know, curious because it said Lil Pump thinks he's gonna die soon. I'm like, okay, what's that about? Anyways, here's a clip from Domus Live News talking about um, a recent, uh, I think it was Instagram story that Lil Pump put up there. So I go to a story after people telling me to go to it because it was getting pretty worrisome. Now the first thing he posted, he goes not feeling good right now. I don't know if I want to keep doing any of this. He then goes on to say, I feel like I'm going to die soon and all this will be over. Peace. I'm looking at this situation because like I've seen a few times little pump. He's like, I don't want to be here anymore. So this this obviously gets people concerned, right? Like, I don't know if you remember a few months ago, Pete Davidson made some made a pretty cryptic post and everybody was, you know, trying to call wellness checks. I think um, Machine Gun Kelly even flew out to, you know, go see him, go help him, things like that. A lot of people were really worried about Pete Davidson. Um, and now Lil Pump is doing the same thing. Now again, I don't know Lil Pump, so all I can do is share my experience. And <clears throat> I, I look at this situation and we see, we see Lil Pump is a fan of, uh, you know, the, the scissorp. Is that, I don't know if that's what the, the kids call it, or they call it lean or whatever it is. And those of you who don't know it, or what that is, or purple drink, right? It's liquid codeine mixed with, I don't know, purple drink, something. I never had that, but I was a huge fan of codeine. I was a fan of opioids, liquid, pill, whatever you got, I was gonna take. Um, the opioid epidemic in the United States is absolutely out of control. Tens of thousands of people are dying every single year and it's not slowing down, right? And just my opinion on the rap community and the rap culture, there's a lot of promotion of things like lean, right? And 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 this is this is an issue because it's killing so many people, but it's part of the culture, right? So it's not really like looked at as a bad thing. But again, we have to look at how many people are dying of this. But when I was watching, uh, you know, Domus Live News, and I saw those posts, like I could relate. I can relate, and I don't know what Lil Pump is going through, but I can tell you from my own personal experience, I can relate to that. As somebody whose life was completely controlled 
buy drugs and knowing that there was something more out there that I, 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 I knew I could be a better person. Like, and the times I tried to get clean, but I, I didn't, like, I knew, you know, I, I didn't know, but I felt like I was hopeless. You know, I felt like it. And again, we don't know the full context around his post, but I just want to bring some awareness to this very serious subject because in Lil Pump's case, he's living life in the, in the public's eye, right? And we see him talking about, you know, uh, you know, drinking codeine, doing drugs, made a song called Drug Addicts. And from an outside perspective, like drugs play a major role in this dude's life. And now you're seeing the depression come in as well. And I feel for the dude, I feel bad. And something that I always think about and try to teach others about is that we, we, always, we always attach value to, you know, these external things, right? Money, fame, fortune, you know, whatever it is, like attention. We attach our values to that. And when we get those things, it can feel really empty. This is why you see so many celebrities who are struggling with depression and other forms of mental illness. Um, I'm thinking about doing some lyrical breakdowns of Linkin Park. Um, Chester Bennington, as you know, um, he passed away, you know, just a couple of years ago from taking his own life. And like, these, this is something that always has to come up. Like, because I know for most of us who, who aren't these like millionaires and super rich and famous, right? We don't get it. Like we look at that, we're like, we don't get it. How can you be, how can you have everything and not just be happy, right? And something I realized a long time ago was money does not necessarily equal happiness, but money equals less stress, all right? And less stress is great. Don't get me wrong. It'd be great if all our bills were paid, if we could take care of family, if we could take care of this and that and that, but it doesn't guarantee happiness. It just helps to reduce stress. But something that we see with a lot of celebrities, in my opinion, is that we see with that, with that money, right? With that fame, with that thing that we're chasing, we, we find that those come with whole new stresses. You know what I mean? So you pay off your old bills, then you get this new mansion or whatever, now you got new bills. You know what I'm saying? Like you get to this point and then you start a business and everything you wanted to do was start a business, but now there's new stresses that come uh, with that business. I can relate to this as a YouTuber. I wanted to be a YouTuber. I wanted to get this message out there. I wanted to try to help other people. I wanted my channel to get bigger so I could reach more people, the views, the subscribers and everything like that. And it's come with this whole new set of challenges that I, I wasn't necessarily equipped to deal with, right? So when we're seeing this, when we're seeing this from the outside looking in, somebody like Lil Pump who's clearly going through something, in my opinion, just working in a drug and alcohol treatment center where we also specialize in mental illness. And again, I am not a licensed professional, um, but I, I worked in the industry doing groups and individual uh, sessions, just talking to people, kind of peer support one-on-one -on -one from my own experiences of addiction, depression, anxiety, and all, all sorts of stuff. But anyways, I look at that and the first, the, the first group of people who I think, you know, need to step in is like the friends and family members. Like I remember just, being twisted up when I saw Lil Peep died, right? And I didn't even know of Lil Peep until he passed away. But when I started researching him, I saw that he was always talking about depression, he was always talking about doing drugs. Those two things don't mix. So when he passed away, I'm like, why did nobody step in? You know, same thing with Mac Miller. Now Mac Miller did get clean for a while and then he ended up overdosing. But every time I look at that, I'm like, why did nobody step in? And this is one of the reasons why, why the people closest to him need to have some type of intervention if this is something that he's struggling with. But if this is somebody in your life, the people closest usually need to step in. And there's a ton of books, there's a ton of videos on YouTube. Um, hell, there's even a show called Intervention on how to do these things and how to have these conversations. And Intervention from my um, family saved my life, right? Now, what can people do as a community? I don't know. Like, you can always send love and support and things like that, but what I've realized just from being a YouTuber, no matter how much love and support gets sent out that way, you're always gonna have just as much hatred, right? And if you look at Lil Pump's video, um, videos being made about him right now, even on YouTube, 
like a lot of them are talking trash, right? Talking about how he's irrelevant now, talking about this, talking about that. And when you're in that dark place, like I've been to that dark place and something I can tell you is, is no matter how much love and support that I was getting in that dark place, my mind would naturally focus on all of the negative, right? So as a community, um, if you're a Lil Pump fan or whatever, like doing these things, sending messages of love and everything, like I, I'm not gonna say that they don't help, they are helpful and the hell they might save somebody's life, but like it needs to come from a more intimate um, person in his life and that's just my opinion. But we have seen scenarios where some celebrities do get the love and support from their fans and that helps you know what i mean but i will say this because i don't want to be a negative nancy during my difficult times here on the youtube platform some of you guys emailing me or dming me or your kind comments have really brightened up my day during a really dark spot so you know what screw it tweet a little pump leave nice comments on his things tell him that you love him whatever it is you know what i'm saying but might want to also let him know that you're worried about him and hope that he gets some kind of help. And, you know, I, I think it's safe to say, looking at, you know, what he posted on his story, that the dude does need some help, all right? But, you know, try to help the people in your life. Try to help yourself. If you are somebody who is struggling, reach out, ask for help. You know, check yourself into treatment. Find yourself a therapist. Talk to your doctor. Talk to your friends. Talk to your family. Talk to a teacher. Talk to somebody. Talk to somebody down in the comment section because there is always hope. All right. But anyways, that's all I got for this video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're new, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell. And a huge, huge thank you to everybody supporting the channel over on Patreon. You are all amazing. And if you would like to become a patron, help support the channel, get access to some other cool stuff, click or tap right there. All right. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time.